Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hey friends, how are you today? Listen, I'm so glad you're here and welcome to episode 23. If you're listening to this when it goes live, it's January 2021, and I'm actually recording this on January the 3rd, so it is right at the start of the new year. So happy new year to you. I hope this year is just a little bit kinder to everyone than 2020 was. My Christmas and New Year's was very, very quiet. Certainly not like most years. And truthfully, you guys, I'm a huge introvert. And even though I love people, I get tired with all the big Christmas parties. There's a balance, right? I love people. I love my friends and family. I enjoy spending time with them. And I still need a bit of quiet space to recharge my batteries. Okay, so let's dive into today's episode. Do you choose a word of the year? Have you ever? Yes? No? Well, if you haven't, it is a fun exercise and I really recommend it. I find that it sets the tone for your year. Last year, in 2020, my word of the year was collaboration. I chose it because it just resonated with me. And because I believe that when we work together, we can create so much more than when we're on our own. I say we actually create a triple win. Essentially, because we can create such a bigger change than I could have ever accomplished on my own. Yeah, I just said that. A triple win. Boy, and it's a bit of a tongue twister too. Triple win. It's not a horse racing term. It's not like the triple crown. It just means that my partner, the person who I'm collaborating with wins, I win, and our clients and the community also wins. We get to have more fun and we leverage our skills, resources, and our hearts. I'm amazed at the power of how choosing one word, one essence can transform your life or transform your year. Ever since I set that intention early in 2020, I had amazing opportunities literally fall into my lap. Within one month of choosing the word collaboration, I was a guest on three podcasts. I taught two separate master classes. I was invited to be a guest for an interview in a magazine. And I enjoyed facilitating great collaborative workshops with groups. I wanted to help and they got to share their vision to work more harmoniously and have a greater impact too. I am so grateful that those opportunities showed up for me. Now this year, well, this year is different, isn't it? I'm recording this, like I said, right at the start of 2021, and yet I've chosen my word for this year, and of course I will share it with you towards the end of the episode. But that's not where we're going to go right now. I want you to know that this word of the year, it's not about checking those boxes and rushing to choose a word. If you're listening to this later in the year, maybe it's the summer, maybe it's the spring, go ahead and choose your word now. Just because it's no longer January doesn't mean that this can't apply to you. Your aim is to choose a word that creates a feeling that resonates with you. Did you already choose your word of the year? If you did, send it to me. Send me a DM at Candy Motsek on Instagram. I'm really curious to hear what you guys are choosing. Maybe you meant to choose one, but you never got around to it. So now is your chance. Don't worry, it is not too late. Normally, this is the time of the year we're kind of filled with possibility and vision and dreams. But truthfully, Many of us just want to be moving past 2020. We want it to go away. 
It was a hard year. And even though, for me, none of my close friends and family got sick, I have clients who caught COVID and many of my friends who have been affected and family members who have been affected because of the results of COVID. So despite the pandemic and all those current restrictions that are still in play, there is a lot that we can still be in control of. We can control how we think. We can control our attitude. Through this, we can control how we feel. And all of that comes together to control our life, our actions, how we live. So you can still declare what you want this year to be like. Stake your claim for the new year, no matter what's going on in the world around you. Stake your claim that you have control over how you think and feel and your attitude and how your life turns out. So today we're going to talk about two things to do with the word of the year. The first is, why do you want to choose one? And the second is how to choose your word. Now, as a bonus to this episode, and just to make your life a little bit easier, I've made you a little gift. It is a PDF workbook, and it's called How to Choose Your Word of the Year, and you can download it when you sign up for my free resource library, The Coaches Online Business Academy. I'll pop that link in the show notes so it's really quick and easy for you to find it. If you're already a member of my community and you already have a log on, it's there. It's ready for you. It says new right at the beginning in the free resources. It's right at the top. Go grab your copy right now and follow along and use it as you choose your word of the year. So let's dive into how, why would we choose a word of the year? Like, why are we doing it in the first place? So when I first heard of this idea, honestly, I thought it was kind of silly. You know, like how could using a word like gratitude or focus or simplify or consistently or even sparkle have any effect on your year? Well, here's why. It's because choosing a word isn't just about micro planning a specific set of goals. It's rather about framing your year through the lens of your word. When you choose a word, You're creating a beacon for yourself. It's really a signpost for how you want your year to look. And remember, you still have control over lots to do with your life, no matter what's happening outside of your world. You still control your thoughts and your feelings and what you do and what you don't do. So use that word as your signpost for how you want your year to look. That word is a filter. It becomes a filter for your goals for your emotions, for your decisions, for your actions, for the things that you say yes to or no to. My example from last year, like I said, I chose that word collaboration. And what it meant for me was that my intention for last year was to embrace anything and everything that came my way and to go looking for areas to collaborate and share with others. So I set an intention for partnerships with a win-win orientation. I did it because I wanted to grow my business. And I know that one of the best ways is to help others. You know that saying, the way to get more of what you want is to help others get what they want. So by choosing collaboration as my theme, it meant I was committed to breaking free from my comfort zone and to say yes and to go find things and experiences that I may have shied away from before. And look what happened, right? I got those guest opportunities. I taught workshops and I found other ways to collaborate with both my clients and my peers. One important example, you're listening to it right now. I launched this podcast. I was introduced to Michelle Abraham from Amplify You through an acquaintance. And it's only because of her and her team that you are listening to this podcast today. And soon, you're going to hear me as a guest on one of her podcasts too. Don't worry, I'll tell you all about it in advance, but that's coming as well. And it probably, you know, this podcast and the idea of it would probably still be an idea in the back of my mind instead of the reality that it can help you right now. So, Since collaboration was top of mind, it meant too that I went back to my clients and I asked them, 
how can I help you even better? And because of these conversations, I created a new program and I'm currently offering it to new coaches. It's called How to Get Your First Paying and Future Paying Clients. And it's been a game changer to help them reach that milestone of going from newbie coach to paid coach. I've got to say too, there's no rules here, right? When you're choosing your word. But think about that. Because I went back to my clients and asked them what they needed, then I was able to help them even better. So like I said, no rules. So don't stop at choosing just a word for the year. If you feel motivated to, go ahead and choose a word for the month or even the season. You're just using it as a signpost to guide your decisions and your goals. Use this approach in a way that serves you best and most importantly, have fun with it. So how do you choose a word of the year? How do you decide? Well, you might find that you have a word that has just presented itself to you. That's the only way I can describe it. One that for some reason, it just shows up and it feels right. And if this is you, don't question it. Just go with it. It's how I chose my word for 2021. Actually, the word presented itself to me and the word kind of chose me. If you've never chosen a word of the year, you can easily do it with these five simple steps. The first one, relax. Grab a cup of tea or coffee or a glass of wine and play your favorite playlist. Second, create some space for yourself. Reduce distractions and put aside a little bit of uninterrupted quiet time. Step number three, grab a pen and paper. I think I say this in every episode about pen and paper, but you guys know I love writing things down. Writing encourages your brain to slow way down. Now, you got your pen and paper, you got a cup of tea or a glass of wine, you've got a little bit of dis undistracted space. Now consider some of these questions. You don't have to respond to all of them, but whichever one speaks to you most. How would you like to grow? Listen to the question and answer it on your pen and on your with your pen and paper. Who are you when you are at your best? What fulfills you most? What's next for you? What sounds exciting and like a really interesting stretch? Imagine it's a year from now and you're thinking that the year that's just ended, you're sitting back and you're reflecting on it. What was satisfying? What did you learn? What did you release? And who have you become? Now, don't worry if you're madly trying to write these questions down. Remember, you can go grab that PDF and use it. All of these questions and more are in there to prompt you to work through this. Step number four, allow and accept. Has one word just kind of popped out at you? You may see a word that repeats itself in the answers to your questions. That might be your word. If not, read a list of positive, inspiring words. There's a list in the PDF I told you about too, or you can just go to Google and type in list of positive words and there's a whole bunch there for you. And then finally, don't rush it. Choose a couple of words, let them roll around in your mind for a day or two. You may find that you wake up tomorrow morning with the word all of a sudden firm in your head. So that's it. That's all you need to do. Okay, so now let me tell you what my word of the year is. It's go giver. Yeah, go giver. I chose it, or rather it chose me because I wanna help you and I wanna have a big impact with my clients, my listeners, and the ripple effect that my clients create in other people's lives. That sounds a little bit complicated. Most of my clients are coaches, new coaches like you. When you coach other people, you have an effect on their life and through your life 
and their life. So there's that ripple effect of so many more people being affected because of you coaching your clients. When I think of giving, I think of adding value, contributing, supporting. Those are the words that come to me. And they're what we all need more of. My business will grow based on the amount of people that I help. And yours will too. I believe that the most successful people are the ones who help the most people and create all types of success as a result. Success is about money, yeah, but it's also about satisfaction and relationships and creativity. There's that quote again. It's the same quote that showed up for me last year. You will get more of what you want when you help others get what they want. Hence my word, go giver for this year. I read a book with the same title a couple of years ago. It's called Go Giver and it's by a guy by the name of Bob Berg. If you're looking for a good read, grab it at your local bookstore or on Amazon. It's a parable that impacted me deeply and I bet you would like it too. It doesn't take very long to read. It's about an hour, hour and a half to read it. So you could easily read it next weekend. I'll put the link in the episode notes for you so you can go check it out. All right, so you've got everything you need now to choose your word of the year. And like I said earlier, to help make it easier for you, I made you this PDF workbook called How to Choose Your Word of the Year. Yeah, I know, not a creative title, but it's a workbook that's going to really help you. To get your copy, sign up for my free resource library, The Coaches Online Business Academy. The link is in those show notes. And as soon as you sign up and get your private log on, you're going to be able to access it. And if you're ready to work with your own coach to overcome obstacles, to get a little bit more help choosing your word of the year and get the results that you want while creating more meaningful success, I would love to invite you to sign up for a consult with me. We'll talk, we'll coach, and then we'll see if we're ready to work together. The link to do that is in the episode notes as well. So that's it for today, friends. Come listen next week. Find out what your word of the year is. Send me a DM on Instagram at Candy Motsek. I can't wait to hear from you and I can't wait to connect with you then. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be. Music